Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how you can get good with Git, specifically using Xcode as your main tool for doing so. So for those who don't know, Git is a way that you can manage your own projects and is a source control tool. So if you're working on a big team, if people are making a lot of changes, you want a way to make sure that all those changes actually make it into your code base. But if you're just a solo developer, you can use Git to branch and do all these kind of different changes, test some things out without having to worry that you're gonna mess something up completely and not be able to get back to where your project was working. So first I wanna show you how you can actually get a repository on your computer because a lot of times that's gonna be the case. You know, if you join a team, they already have their own Git repository working, they already have their code base, you need to get it onto your local computer so that you can start making changes. So in this example, I'm just on GitHub, I'm on my own profile, and this is a project that I created following Apple's tutorials for how to learn SwiftUI. So in order to get the code onto my computer, I'll simply go to this green code button, click, and then you'll see this option to clone. Now you could uh, just download a zip, but what we're going to use is this clone option so that as we make changes, make updates, we can actually push those changes to this remote here on GitHub. So go ahead and click this little button. That'll copy it to our clipboard. And now I want you to open an application called Terminal. So if you hit Command Spacebar, you'll get your Spotlight search on your computer. And go, just type in Term, and you'll get Terminal. So I'll make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. But for those who haven't used Terminal, I'm not the biggest fan. I know there's huge debates about this. But what we're going to do, we're going to find a location where we want to add our repository, clone it in, and then everything else is going to be in GitHub. This will be the only Terminal stuff, I promise. So to navigate your computer in the Terminal, you use something called CD, the command CD. That's change directory, short for that. And then I'm just going to go to the desktop. So now I'm on the desktop if I hit ls, which basically just lists out everything in that directory. You can see I have a whole bunch of stuff, but the command that I want to use is git clone, and then I'm going to paste in the link that I had before. So the landmarks.git from my profile. You can see cloning into landmarks, all that's been done. If we do ls again, you can now see that landmarks has been added. So if I go over to a finder window that I've opened, you can see landmarks, and here's our Xcode project. So I'll go ahead and open this up. And now you can see we are on, or we are in Xcode. So this is Xcode 12. I really wanted to show this demo using Xcode 13, but I found there's still a number of issues uh, when trying to work with it. So I thought it might be better just to be safe and use these stable versions. So you can see, this is the project that I have. If I run it real quick, for those who haven't built out this project before that Apple has on their website, you can kind of get an idea of what the app does, what it looks like, some of the functionality. So it brings up here in the simulator, iPhone 12 mini. And once this loads, you'll see a whole bunch of national parks, lakes. Uh, there's like this featured section you can scroll through. And when you click in, you actually get a detail view. So you can see a map, a name, some more information from here. And this is actually coming from a local JSON file. So it's like this uh, landmark, as I knock everything and send the camera flying, uh, there's this landmark data JSON. So this is actually pulling information from there. And we're just gonna make a whole bunch of changes and I can show you how you can use Git to your advantage to not really mess anything up. So the first thing I wanna show you, on the second tab, this is your source control tab, source control navigator, excuse me. So if you click in, you can see we have these sections for branches, tags, remotes, stash changes. So if I navigate down here, you can see branches. Right now we just have one, it's main, tags, no tags. Remotes, this is origin, and that is the remote that's actually on GitHub. So if I right click this and I say view on GitHub, you can actually see that it pulls up the repository on GitHub. So that's the way you know that things are actually being hosted online. So we come back to Xcode. 
stash changes, no stash changes, so I'm not gonna see anything there. But what I wanna show you, if you're on branches and you see main, here are all of the commits that I've made as I was going through this project and had it on GitHub. So if we wanna make some changes, let's go ahead and right click and we can hit branch from main. And I'll just call this something basic, made changes. If you're working on a team or even if you're by yourself, give your branches descriptive names so you can actually understand what you're doing. It's very helpful. It makes it easier for your team to understand and it makes it easier for you to understand if you come back to your project like two or three weeks later and don't remember anything you did. So now I have the made changes branch. I'll go back in here and I'll pull up the landmark info again. So if we were looking at the not that, if we were looking at the simulator and we actually had, uh, what was it? It was this turtle rock, so Joshua Tree National Park. If we try and find that, so turtle rock, Joshua Tree National Park, this is the JSON for that. So we can see all this description. Let's just go ahead and pretty much get rid of all of this. And I can show you when you delete, and then I'll save. Anytime you make a change when a project is under version control or using Git, Xcode has this helpful little tool that it shows you in line changes that were actually made. So if we click on this, you can see show change, discard change. So if we show the change, you can now see Xcode brings up everything that you changed. So if we hide this again, and we'll rerun the project, so this build succeeded, it'll launch. Now we can come back down here, once this is clickable, so we'll go back, come back to Turtle Rock. Now you can see we got rid of the description, so that's gone. Now another thing I wanted to change is, I think this border on the image could be a lot bigger, and I think we could have a bigger shadow. Let's just make this as obnoxious looking as possible. So if we go on to our circle image, so it's in the helpers group if you're making these changes with me. But even if you're not, this applies to any and all projects that you're working on with Xcode. The version control system's not gonna care what the project is. So kind of going for the concepts uh, to help you understand how you can actually use Xcode to your advantage when working with Git rather than having to use an external tool or God forbid the terminal. So. This will start loading up and you can see here is the current implementation of the circle image, pretty small, but I'm just gonna make this obnoxiously large. So we'll make it 40 and this will be 10, yeah, make it 20. So now we have this really big ring, really big shadow. And again, we see what are the changes that were actually made. And if you quickly just wanna discard all your changes, you can just hit that and it'll revert back to what it was. But seeing as how I don't want that, I do actually want some changes to be made. Now you can see, made those changes. And now I'll run it again. And we'll see what all of our circle images are gonna look like when we actually run it in a real project. So I can click on any of these. I'll do the Sylvan Samber Creek. And there we go. Big and obnoxious, just like I wanted. So if we go back, now I've made a number of changes that I like, I'm happy with. You see these little M's, so these indicate that something's been modified, and we're going to push those changes up to GitHub. So the way we can do that, actually commit the changes we've made, is here in this source control tab, you have the options to commit, push, pull. We'll do those here in a minute. But first, I wanna show you commit. So you can see there is the shortcut if you don't feel like using the menu every time. But if you hit commit, you'll now get this section here on the left that shows you either in the hierarchical format or in a flat format everything that got changed. So if we stick with hierarchy, doesn't really matter, whatever works for you, you can actually see the history of your files. So what was the change? Here's what it was before and here's what it currently is. So I deleted everything. Same thing if we look on circle image, it used to have the overlay with a line width four and then had the radius seven, I updated it to 40 and 20. So I'm cool with that. Made some changes to descriptions and circle image. So those are the changes I wanna make, those are the things I wanna commit. 
And if you're ready to actually push this up to GitHub, you can go ahead and hit this little checkbox in the bottom. So push to remote and then has the remote that you want to push to on the front. So that's origin as well as a branch where it's going to actually send it. So here it's made changes and you can see there's this little like parenthesis CR. So what that means is it's actually going to create the branch. Because remember, I created that locally on my computer. GitHub doesn't know about that yet. So if we go ahead and push it up, commit two files and push. So this will take a minute to load and then it will actually push up our changes. If we go into our source control navigator again, you see we have made changes. And if we right click, now you can actually view on GitHub. So if I view on GitHub, we can now see that I am in the made changes branch as opposed to the main branch. And you're also getting this little pop-up here that is showing that made changes had recent pushes less than a minute ago. And if you're working on a team, this is typically how you will actually request that your changes make it into the main code base. So to show you a quick example of that, you can do a compare and pull request. So when you open a pull request, you just give it a description, things you've done. Some teams will have templates of things they want you to fill out describing your changes. But then you just go ahead, once you finish filling that out, create pull request. And now on your repository, it'll show all of the open pull requests. So if we go back one level, you'll have a bunch of pull requests that have been created, a bunch that have been closed. But if you click into here, you can actually see all the details for it. So made some changes to description, circle image. That was just the commit message I made. You can make updates to this. And then you'll see every commit that is in this pull request, any kind of checks that have been done, Teams will have custom checks to make sure you're not merging anything in that's broken or not ready to be added yet. And then finally, files changed. So you actually get a good summary of everything on a file level that's been updated in this project. So you can see for me, I updated description to not have anything just on that one uh, section of JSON, that one section of JSON that related to the Joshua Tree Park as well as made updates to the line width and the radius on the circle image. So if you're actually ready to merge those things in, you can always do merge pull request and then this code will be added to main. But what I wanna show you back on Xcode, every change that we've made, remember, was done in this made changes branch. So right now, if we resume this, you'll see we currently have our really obnoxious border with the big uh, shadow. But if we simply right click on main and we do checkout, you'll see this pop up asking, do you want to check out main? So it's basically a warning. It's just saying all files in the current working copy are going to switch over to the main branch or whatever branch you're switching to. So I want to go ahead and do that. I hit checkout. And now if we resume this again, you might have already caught it down here at the bottom, these numbers updated, right? So as you can see, all the changes that we made on that one branch aren't affecting the main branch. So this is great when you're working as a team. So any kind of changes that you do aren't going to affect what someone else is doing and vice versa. And if you're just doing this as a solo developer, it can be really helpful because if there are a bunch of changes that you want to make, but you're not really sure how to do it, or you're not sure if things are going to break, you can simply add a new branch and then do all the experimentation you want. And if you end up breaking your project, doesn't really matter, just switch back to the branch. You don't have to worry about trying to do a whole bunch of undos and redos. So it's a great way to actually manage your projects. And the last thing I wanna show, if you are working as a solo dev, if you haven't, or if you're starting a brand new project, even if it's on a team, if you wanna create a brand new project, how can you actually get Xcode to use Git right from the beginning? So if we do a new project, doesn't really matter what it is. Git test, again, doesn't matter. Hit next. There is this great little source control toggle here that Xcode gives you automatically when you're creating brand new projects. So simply click create Git repository on my Mac and then it will automatically do that for you. So hit create, Git test, if I just want to do real quick, 
show you that I'm not lying, that it will actually use Git for you. If I just delete this, there you go. We can see we got our little blue bar, show changes, shows the M, and you can follow a similar process. So if you've made all these changes locally and you actually want to get this on GitHub, so rather than pulling things down uh, from your remote, you can actually add this to an online remote. So you can come in here, get test, go on to remotes, you click, you see, oh, there's nothing there. Okay, that's fine. So now you can right click and you have this option of new git test remote. So when you click that, you can see I already have my account set up to where it's my GitHub, I'm the owner, I can give it a name, I can give it a description if I want, but don't really care. So now I can create and this will push everything up to GitHub. And now you can see this little origin has popped up. And if I right click, view on GitHub, this is now my repository on GitHub. So the last thing I want to show is when changes are made that you didn't do, how can you actually get those into your project? So we're going to use the one that I just created. We're just going to add a readme. So add a readme. And we can just say, this is a simple test to show how to pull from GitHub. So there we go commit the new file. And now you can see we have git test and it's the added readme. And we want to make sure we actually get that change brought down locally. So first what I want to do is in finder, we have our git test. You can see there isn't any readme file, right? We have git test, we have the project. So that's all great. But now we actually want to get the readme into the project. So if we go back to Xcode, save, First thing I wanna do before we pull anything, I'm gonna commit and push this change. So we have our constant, so updated hello text, and then we'll push, commit one file and push. And now what we can do, we can use our source control and pull down the changes to actually get the readme. So if we pull, And now if we come back to the finder, you can see now we have our readme file showing up. So be sure when you're working on projects, when changes are made, you get notified, just pull down the latest changes and then you'll be working from the most up-to-date copy so that you don't run into any kind of conflicts later, you know, kind of pushing and pulling and you kind of working on an outdated repo. Well, that does it, everybody. Hopefully this video is helpful, kind of give you an introduction to how you can use Git with Xcode. I highly recommend, even if you're just a solo developer, using Git, using branches, it's a great way for you to organize your projects and test out features that you aren't really sure might work. And it's absolutely essential to know when you're working on a team so that you actually understand how you can manage uh, your code actually getting added to the real repository and not really messing with anyone else. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave it a like and consider subscribing. I appreciate it everyone. Thank you so much and I'll catch you in the next one.